What's up there guys? Today I just want to talk about this new magnetic lock system that I'm going to install in my front office. My plan is when I get my work done and I want to leave, I want to make it so that way I can lock up my warehouse, lock up my office, and get out and leave my IT guy here so that way when he walks out the front door, it'll lock behind him and he doesn't have to have any security access or any key to the office, which is genius in my opinion, if, if it all works, that is. It seemed to be the best quality one that I can find because it had this heavy duty IP65 waterproof keypad, which I was very fond of and it was very slim because I had the aluminum structure type door you find in standard office buildings out, like mine is out front, which I'll show you. So this one here worked really good. It was backlit and had this little, you know, LED, which gives you some kind of full sense of security. Also, on the back of it, there is a photo sensor eye, which is, I have a piece of tape on there, and a little piezo sensor, so that way, if this is removed from the housing and it picks up the light, this will go off and it'll actually keep this engaged, and you can actually tie it into the wiring, into your alarm, not that I am, but that's a nice little feature. I like that. I like the fact that it had this little quick door access button, which you can mount on your wall. It looks nice. Um, this seems to be pretty much the standard power supply that everybody uses. I don't know, I've looked on Alibaba, Ex AliExpress, Amazon, eBay, pretty much everybody is using this. The way it works is a standard 110 to 240 volt AC input. It's just a pigtail, so you have to hardwire it with some Romex or so I'm just gonna actually use some uh, heavily gauge speaker cable, run it out and grab into a extension cord or, or something, whatever I got up in the attic up there. Run that, connect it to AC, 110 of course, and I'm going to mount this to the outside next to my door, so that's where this is going to go, and over here is the actual lock, right? When it has the light, it's basically telling you that it's in secure mode. So if I either hit the remote, one of these little RFID keypads, or my door access button, that lock should just come right off. So, we'll see. Here's the door button. And there it is. It didn't quite fall off the way I was expecting it. Didn't get the effect I was looking for, so I'll try it again. The light's back on. There it goes. Let's try it again. Ah, see that? There's your magnetic structure, your electromagnetic switch. This is your piece of metal, which conducts to works like a charm also over here on the light it'll tell you when it's on solid flashing you could use your key ID which separates it when it's red it's locked on air again or you could use this hideous looking remote which the range is pathetic so I don't even bother with that thing but it does work in case of a jam I'm just going to keep it in the truck for what the heck. And of course my code, which I'm not going to tell you because it's a secret. And there it goes, it's green. See that? Back in business is locked. The LED is telling you so. So there's how it basically all works out. There's a lot of wiring in here. If you look at this manual, like this one here, obviously I can't work off this because... But this actually is a mirror image of the color diagram that was also included in there. This one here is one I actually utilized because it seemed to be cl the clearest, easiest way for me to identify what the heck I'm doing. Now over here, you got your normally open, which you're not being utilized. You have your normally closed and your negative common, which goes to your motor. Then you got your 12 volts power and ground. You have a push button, which comes from the switch here. And these two control wires, which I'm not utilizing. But they're here for the bell or tying into an alarm system or an external siren. I'm not using any of that stuff. I have a real alarm in my office, so I don't care about that. What I really just want is to keep solicitors out of my face. I don't want them coming in my place. Um, unless it's the FedEx guy or it's the UPS guy or we want to get in and we want to get out or whatever the story is. That's what I want out of this. So, if you came to watch the video just to learn about the programming, I, I understand because I had a hard time learning how to program this thing myself. And for somebody who does remotes and alarms for, for a living, when I'm suffering, trust me, there needs to be a video to explain to someone else about how this thing works. So, the first thing, if you look at the manual, if you can read this, 
I mean, I can't. This is so small. I have to use a magnifying glass just to read what the hell is going on. So, in the manual, it says, hit pound your master code, which is 999999 pound, and that'll put you into programming. I've done this 8,000 different ways. It never worked. Here's how it's supposed to be done. You're supposed to hit pound 999999 pound, then hit 1, user 1. It says in the book that when the light turns yellow, there is no such thing as yellow. It's red and green, which combine make yellow in China, I guess. That's programming mode. Now you can enter pins, you can program RFIDs, additional transmitters, set up different user permissions and pin codes. That's how it has to be done. So you have to assign by hitting one first. Then you go through the book, and basically from that point on, it starts to act normally again. So what I did is I set up some a few different pin codes for myself and some employees. Now it's working perfectly. To exit programming, hit star. When it's on solid, it's not actually active. Hit it again. When it's programming, it's out of programming, I should say. It's in the blinking mode. That's when it's working normally. So that's that. All this other wiring stuff, I am not going to use any of this stuff. I don't. I, if you're going to use any of this stuff, you could certainly get a multi-conductor cable, which is probably what I would use, and you go color to color. So that way to make it simple behind the wall or wherever you're running your cables out to. So that way you can identify your wires pretty easily. Aside from that, the wiring is pretty straightforward. If you follow the manual as it dictates, connect these together, you common and you ground to one side of the push button switch, the push button output, very straightforward, two wires to the magnetic lock. It works like a charm. Over here, there's a potentiometer, so that way you can just take a little screwdriver like this, and you can turn it from zero seconds to the far left all the way up to 15 seconds, and that will delay the output. So you'll see over here the LED light. When I hit this, the amount of time that I put on the potentiometer setting is going to determine how long you have to exit before the lock reconnects. I made it about five seconds because that's all you need because my door is like right here and the button's going to be over here. So you have to hit it, walk about three feet, push the door open by the time it closes. That happens in two and a half seconds, three, so five is more than enough. So this here is the wall near the exit. So my plan is to put the exit switch right around here since I got a clear shot to go up here. Behind here is a big old hole. I can run it up. This area above the door is where my old motion sensor was and the wire was running outside the wall instead of inside the wall. So I ran that in through there. I pulled this thing down. And this will give me access to the attic. Right up in here is real snug because there's a steel I-beam right behind there. So I'm just going to take an antenna and fish the wire from here the rest of the way up. This contact switch on the front door is going to be relocated because that's where the magnet's going to be located at. As you can see here that I have my mounting plate. My wires ran through the door. Just have to fix this. So it's going to lay out kind of like that when it's in there. Making a little progress. There's my door exit button. On this side, I got my wire ran through my multi-conductor, which I just use this here to just sneak it through the aluminum frame. Plan is to run it up, punch a hole right out there, come out and up to the ceiling like the rest of the wires for the alarm system. All right. There's a keypad mounted up in there. Doesn't interfere with the door whatsoever. Looks great. Protected. From the rain so it's, it's a nice spot it'll last I think so everything is installed you can see the LED is on I have this quick disconnect which I installed for when a delivery driver comes by or something like that relocated my sensors so that way they can all fit in that little spot and you'll notice that as I push the door it's not happening just gonna hit this button real quick. I have that on seven second delay. Open it up. Beautiful, right? So now I'm just gonna let it close up. You can actually see through the door when the light is on. You see it right there, that red light? It's a little bonus. And then over here on the keypad, it's got that blinking light. 
I'm gonna enter my code. I want you all to see that. Hit enter. It goes green. Door unlocks. Open sesame.